All right. <clears throat> there we go. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another Webflow Community live stream. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me today. Because I wanted to celebrate the movie, we're going to recreate the original Super Mario Brothers start screen in Webflow. Let's do this. Let's break it down. All right, so I have the start screen here, and I'm just going to use basic uh, rectangles to highlight how I break this down visually into boxes and rows and columns. All right, so my first thought is the whole canvas, I feel like, needs to be flexbox, right? So my first box or my first div would be the whole thing. And within it, I would have even more boxes. So... So I have what I see in my head is two rows. I have, I group these in one row. Then I see these two down here, the one with Mario and the selection. I see these as two rows. So immediately I'm thinking flex box and then the two child, which is the, the magenta colorish boxes, the two children uh, divs are gonna be vertically stacked. So the direction would be vertical here so now that we figure that out let's go even deeper now this top row it looks like two rows stacked on top of each other as well so i see this box right here being split up into two rows and so there's that and then there's that okay and now we're going to go even deeper and then this right here I see it's four columns because they're all in one row. So I have this part of the UI, this part of the UI, this. So that's two, three, and four. So that means this would be a flex box with the default direction of horizontal, all right? And now we go over here to this next row and what I see is two rows again. So this first one, and then the one with the text down here. Now that we have all that, let's go down here. Let's look at this now. Let's see here. I see, I see two rows. So one here and one down here for Mario and the bricks. So we can say something like this. And inside of those, I have even more boxes. And so this is a row right here. I can see this as a row and I can see this top score indicator being its own row as well. Go one more deeper because this, it looks like two rows, right? Two rows and two columns. And we have that row and that row. So two rows and then within there we have two columns, but you you get the gist, right? And then lastly, let's get Mario here. So this row can be separated into two rows. So this first row right here, that holds Mario. And then the last row that holds the bottom bricks. All right? So this is what goes through my mind. I don't actually like make boxes on the designs. I just start at the top of any Figma design or any design that's given to me from a client. And I'm like, okay, where are the boxes? How am I gonna lay out the boxes? Next, we're gonna go into building the start screen. Let's begin. So again, we're using this as our visual guide on what boxes or what divs to put in. So our first one, we have the full thing, the full screen. So I'm gonna go Command E, type in div. Enter, there we go. And let's call this screen wrapper. There we go, screen wrapper. And the height of this, the actually the minimum height of this is going to be 100 SVH. Now we're gonna set that to flex right here. That's flex box. And again, what we pointed out is this has the two pink boxes that are vertically stacked. And notice how there's a gap right here in the middle. That means that the first row is attaching itself to the top and the bottom row is attaching itself to the bottom. So we need to do direction vertical 
and see this right here? This is the one we're looking for. Notice how the two boxes are attached to the top and bottom. So that's my visual indicator that this is what I want. All right. So inside of the screen wrapper, let's add a div, command E or control for Windows, control E, enter, and we have our first row at the top. Now if you press con uh, command D to duplicate, now we have this div block at the top and then we have one at the bottom. This is exactly what we need. And so we are done with those two rows, right? Now let's go ahead and make two more rows inside of the top row. So let's call this top, top row. And we're going to make this flex vertical and let's center them, okay? And the reason why I did center is because look at this. If I drag these in, these seem like these are centered on the screen, these two purple boxes, all right? They look like they wanna get squished in. So uh, let's. that's why I'm doing vertical. The two boxes are vertically stacked on top of each other and then they're centered on the screen. So this is what we want, all right? Cool. Let's go ahead and put in another div and see how it squishes to the center. That's what we want. Let's duplicate that, Command D. And now we have two centered on top of each other. All right. Now that we've done those, let's do these uh, part of the UI. Okay. So we have this row being horizontal, but it has four boxes. All right. So if I go to this div block right here, let's call this top UI, All right? And we're gonna make this flex box. And yep, the direction by default is horizontal. That's what we want. And if you look here, if you go back to Figma, notice how everything is aligned bottom because this has no text at the top. So they're aligned bottom. So let's go ahead and do that right here, okay? And let's go ahead and put in more boxes. So Command E, type in div, and we have one. Let's go ahead and put three more. So Command D, one, two, three. Now we have four, and they're right next to each other. But notice how they're like really close to each other. Like there is no space in between. This is where flex gap comes in. So back on the top UI, notice how I have a gap of zero. But if I go here, there's some gap in between. So we can just, you know, play around with numbers, let's say 24 pixels. I don't know, I'm just guessing that we could always change it later. But we have 24 pixels. And now look, all of these boxes are 24 pixels away from each other. Cool. That's a good start. Now let's make this look kind of 8-bit. So I already uploaded the font. So let's go ahead and put Mario and four zeros. So in this div block, command E, or sorry, yeah, command E for quick find, type in text, click on text box. There we go. Mario, shift enter, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's, a, that's the starting score. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and what's next? We have the amount of coins. So let's go ahead and drag in our coin. Drag that into that div block. There we go. And right next to it, let's command E again, text block X zero zero. We have zero coins, but notice how it's stacked on top of each other. That's because this image already has a display in line, in line block. But this text block has a display block. What this means is it takes up the full width. So it goes on its own row. So we don't want that to happen. I want both of them horizontal. Okay. I want them both on the same line. So what we can do is we can name the parent div, this div block, we're going to call it coin UI. And I'm going to do, you guessed it, Flexbox. And Flexbox already has the default direction of horizontal. And so we're good there. Let's put some space in between so we can use flex gap or gap for flex. Eight, 
That's good. And there we go. Next one, we have world one one. So let's go ahead and put in a piece of text. World shift enter one one. And it looks like it needs to be centered. So let's call out text center. Let's give this a style of text center. And there we go. And then the last one, let's just copy this text center and paste it into the last one. And this one is called time. And let's press shift enter and a uh, shift space for non-breaking space to put that transparent space right there. So that way time doesn't move down. One more thing, let's move this away from the top. So this top row, let's give it a padding of, I don't know, 42 seems to be the answer to everything. So there we go. And we have our first row done. So next, the other purple. So this purple has two blue boxes vertically stacked, right? So let's go ahead and do that. In here, in this next row, this div block, let's command D, type in div, all right? And let's duplicate it. So we have two rows. This first row has the logo. Let's drag that logo in to that new div block. And there we go. And in the next row, we have a piece of text. Uh, so I'm just going to put 1985 Nintendo. So this row and this row are too close to each other. So what we can do is take this top row and add a gap. Okay, so this top row, let me show you real quick, has two children, the top UI that we just finished and then this new row, okay? I can space these two out in between each other with gap for flex using rows. And let's do, say, 20. Cool, 20 sounds good. All right. So next, this one right here it seems, it needs to be aligned right. Text right. I can. Oh, okay, easy. So I'm aligning the type to the right. Oh, now that I'm looking at it, this seems too close to each other. See, this is what I mean. How about 10 VW? Okay, there we go. So what I did for the gap, I'm using the viewport width, the width of the viewport to give me a percentage. And that way, this could be responsive. The gap in between each UI at the top. Okay, I think we're done. Oh wait, these two, let me color it brown. Text brown, change it to brown. There we go, cool. I think we're done with the top two, yeah? So let's go to the bottom, all right? Let's make this more looking like a video game. All right, so the bottom we have two purple rows. Okay, so let's make two divs. So we're done with the top row. Let's collapse that. And right here, command E, div, command D. So we have two div blocks on top of each other. That's what we want. We need to flex it. So we're going to call this div block bottom row. And obviously we need to flex and set the direction to vertical. Now this first, this first row right here, that's going to have our uh, player selection and our top score. So what we can do is say a uh, player select. We're going to call this player select. And we're going to align it center. Now, why didn't I align center its parent, the bottom row? Well, it's because this one down here, the bottom, doesn't need to be centered. It needs to take up the full width. The only one that needs to be centered is a player select. So I can choose one of the child uh, children elements to overwrite what its parent is saying. So I say this one right here can be aligned center. So flex child align center. There we go. Okay. Next, we need two more rows. So the two blue ones. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Div right there, command D to duplicate. And now we have two blocks on top of each other. 
and yeah, we can flex this as well. So player select, this will now also be a flex box, vertical, and let's add a gap in between. Because notice how there's a gap in between top score and the player select. So let's add a gap of 42, sounds good. So this player select right here, now we're gonna go in deeper because we have two more rows, these light blue. So right here, let's call this, um, oh, we have player select. Let's call this player select and top score because this one right here would be player select. And this needs to be, again, flex box and it's vertical. There we go. So let's go ahead and put in a div. Duplicate it. So this, actually, let's not duplicate it yet. This first div block right here is this blue one right here. And notice how this blue one, it has two columns. I didn't make the colored box for it, but you can visually see it's two columns. One for the mushroom indicator uh, and then the text. So we're going to make this um, player. Oh, class naming. We'll make this player select wrapper. And then this one right here, player select row. Cool. And now I can set this to flex as well. And we're going to, we're going to set the align to center, right? The reason why is because I want the mushroom and the text to be vertically aligned center to each other. So let me show you how. Let's go ahead and put in a div. We're putting a div for the mushroom. Okay, that's gonna be for the mushroom. And we're gonna duplicate it, and this div is gonna be for the text. So right here, let's bring in the mushroom into this div block. And then here, we're going to add text. One player gain, there we go. And now what I can do is duplicate this and we'll say two player game. And this one right here, we're just gonna, let's call, let's give these a class name of mushroom. Okay, mushroom, mushroom, and this is gonna combo class mushroom two, so I can set the opacity to zero, so you don't see it. And again, notice how these two rows are too close to each other. So what we can do is take the player, the player select wrapper. So this right here. So the parent of these two wants to say, hey, you two children, I need you to space out from each other. Kind of like a teacher saying, okay, kids, space out from each other. So what I can do is say the rows can be away from each other by 12, 24. Okay, cool. So we have the player select, now we need the top score. So let's put in a piece of text into the other div and the top score is one, two, three, four, five, six. Or we can just do a meme and say just over 9,000. That's a low score though. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. And it's already centered, good to go. All right, and now we just need the last part. We need to add Mario, the bottom bricks, and the hill and the bushes. So let's go ahead and finish this up. Okay, let's add two rows, one row for Mario and one row for the bottom bricks. So Command E, put in a div. So we have first row that Mario is going to go in here, and then Command D and the bricks are gonna go here. Let's go ahead and put in Mario here on the div block. So drag Mario in. There we go. All right, hi Mario. And we're gonna call this Mario. Cool. And here I'm gonna use margin because he's not supposed to be all the way to the left. So uh, let's use margin and 10 VW. Okay, cool. So next, 
we have um, bottom bricks. Okay. And notice how. Okay. So bottom bricks, we're going to make, we're going to add a background image of the bottom bricks. Right. But watch what happens if I preview. The bricks go away. I can't even scroll up and down. I can't see it. The bricks go away. The reason why is because these bottom bricks, uh, the div does not have a height. And since there's no content in it, just a background image, it collapses in itself and the height becomes zero. So what I need to do is find the height. And how I can do that is with the background image I uploaded, I noticed that the width and height is 53 by 76. Width by height, height is 76. So what I can do is give that div a height of 76 preview and there we go all right i think this super mario is too big let's make it smaller there we go okay i'm wondering why mario is down here and mario what do you oh because i have preset sorry i've preset this on a different page uh mario wrapper there we go 10 VW. There we go. Okay. So now I have this flex vertical. Let's finish up by putting in the, we're going to put in the hills and the bushes. So I'm going to use position absolute. I want those to be uh, position absolute within the bottom UI wrapper. So what I need to do to make that happen is I need to set this wrapper as relative because those images are going to be relative to this bottom UI wrapper. And I'm going to drag in, there you go. All right. So I'm going to call this Hills and let's set this to absolute. And we know that the bottom height is 76. So let's give this, let's put this on the bottom left and say 76 pixels from the bottom. There is a tiny, tiny gap. You can see Mario's little feet there. So let's push this down to like 74. Yeah, 74 is good. Cool. And notice how Mario is hiding. <laughs> He's hiding in the or behind. We want to put him on top. So let's use position relative to unlock our Z index and make sure that he's on the top. All right, so we're using Z index 10. And for this right here, the player top score, let's make sure that it, it also doesn't hide behind the hills. So we're going to do position relative and give it a Z index of two. Two is smaller than 10. So that way Mario can run on top of this if the screen is too short. Um, yeah, so next, the last part is the bushes. And did you know the bushes use the same sprite as the clouds? It's just that the, the original developers made the clouds white and the bushes green. So they save space on cartridge memory by using the same sprite, two different colors. <laughs> All right. So let's call this bushes. And we're going to do the same thing that we did for the hills. We're going to do position absolute bottom right. From the bottom, we're going to say 74 pixels. There we go. Let's push it away a bit. There we go. Away from the right. And look at that. We got ourselves a Mario screen. Um, That was a fun build. Uh, the stream happened every 10 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesdays. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you like this stream, click on the like button. Thank you all so much. If you are watching in the live stream or watching a recording of this, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all so much. Again, my name is Nelson Oblos Jr., not Mario. And uh, it's been a blast. And have a good day. And oh, yeah. And don't forget, make the web beautiful together. See ya. Or should I say, wahoo? I should go. I should go down now, huh? Bye.